hey guys welcome back to automation elearn i am your friend suresh dubey and in this video i am going to discuss one more interview question related to java programming so guys before moving ahead i wanted to let you know that i have already covered lot many other topics in java i have discussed core concept fundamental concepts in each and every video so you can refer this playlist on my youtube channel i have given a link in the description you can watch these videos as per your need to learn concept and to understand the fundamental and these fundamentals and concepts which i have discussed on these videos will help you to answer the questions in the interview which you have not prepared for the interview let's start today's discussion so guys this is the simple code snippet i have for today's discussion let me explain the code first and then we'll talk about the output so here i have a class called program output key and i have one integer variable called count this is a static variable and i have initialized it with some value 100 in this case and i have one increment method which is incrementing the value of count variable which is integer static here i have a main method here i am creating an object of the class object of program output 3 called p1 and p1 is calling increment method which is this one and increment method is increasing a value of count and again i am creating another object of the same class program output 3 called p2 and i am just printing p2 dot count so using p1 i am calling increment method and which is eventually increasing a value of count and uh, using p2 i am just printing a value of count so we have to identify we have to figure out what will be the output in this case so guys i would request you to pause the video and uh, you can think about the output you can consider this like you are getting this question in your real interview and you have to answer this question so you can pause and you can give thought about it before moving ahead all right let's try to run this program and see what is the output that we are getting and after that we will try to decode we will try to understand how this output is getting generated so let me run this as a java application and here i am getting an output as a 101 whereas initially we have given we have a count equal to 100 and we are increasing the count value using p1 we are calling p1 dot increment method so p1 object is increasing a value of count using p2 object i am printing p2 dot count and we are getting 101 as a output let's try to understand the concept behind this and we'll also figure out the flow so let me explain this with the help of a small diagram so that you all can understand it easily so i'm going to use a paint so let me paste over here the code so that we can refer here only at the right hand side i'll draw some diagram by which we will try to understand the flow how it is happening so in a layman term consider this is our class in this case we have program output so guys we all know that static variables are associated with the class directly not with the object so here count variable is not associated with p1 and p2 which are object of the class whereas count is directly associated with the class program output 3 in this case i have already covered this topic in a very detail where i have explained lot many concepts related to static members how should we call static members how should we design static members what all are the coding rules that we should apply if you are defining any static methods or static variables so i have discussed all these concepts in these two videos i have also given a link in the description so i would suggest you all to watch these videos where you will learn the complete concept behind static members in java so moving ahead here here count variable is associated with class program output c so here in the diagram what i'll do is i'll have one variable let's say this is count and it has a value as a 100 we have a space for this class program output 3 and in that space i have one variable called count this is a static variable that is the reason i'm initializing count inside class space right so this is the layman explanation i am giving 
I don't want to involve static memory, heap memory concept over here. So in a simple term, you can understand that count is a static, which is obviously associated with the class. That is the reason I have mentioned count inside class space. So I have a count which has a value as a hundred. And in the main method, what we are doing is we are creating an object of the class. So consider this is P1. So this is the P1 object and uh, let's take one more object. Suppose this is P2. So here we are creating two object P1 and P2. So I have initialized P1 and P2 and using P1, I'm calling an increment method and increment method. What it's doing is it's increasing the value of count. So count plus plus means it will increase the value of count by one. So P1 will increase the value of count and it will become 101. So P1 is calling increment method and which is coming here and it's overwriting value of count. So it will not be 100 anymore and it will become 101, right? So value of count is now 101. So we are clear till this line, right? And now we are creating another object that is a P2 and we are just doing P2 dot count. So P2 is created and what P2 will do is it will try to get value of count. So P2 will go here and it will read the value of count as a 101. And that is the same output that we are getting in the Eclipse. Now comes the basic concept. Why P1 override this value? and 100 become 101 why there is not a separate instance of count for p1 because of the same reason which i have explained earlier like count is a static so it is associated with the class directly right it will not be associated with the p1 and p2 it will not be associated with the object of the class here if i have just an integer variable called a equal to 10 in this case, A is not static, right? So the value of A, the instance of A will be separate for P1 and instance of A will be separate for P2 because that is not the static. So this is the instance variable. Instance means P1 and P2. So just to prove this point, what we can do here is in the increment, I'm also increasing a value of A. So here A is 10. And in the increment method, I'm increasing value of A, A++. It will increase the value of A by 1. And I'm calling P1.increment. So this method will be called and value of A will get increased. And again, I'm creating a P2 object. And uh, here I'll do P2.A. So now we are not dealing with count variable anymore. You can ignore this part. But consider, just consider A, which is a non-static variable. So for P1, this value will become 11 and uh, using P2, I'm calling P2 dot A. So let's see what will be the output in this case. Run as Java application. So here, if you notice output is still 10. Why 10? Because we are calling A, which is non-static using P2, right? So P2 dot A, whereas value of A was increased by object P1, not by the P2. In the diagram, if P1 is trying to increase the value of A, which will become 11, because initially we have initialized as a 10, it will become 11. And when P2 is trying to read a value of A, it will still be 10. It will not be 11. So that is the reason we are getting a 10 in the output. So with the help of this example, we understood two things. If variable is of type static, then it is associated with the class and its value will be same for all the objects, right? Like here count. Whereas in case of non-static variable, it is just opposite. It is not associated with the class, whereas it will be associated with the object of the class. P1 will have a separate copy of A and P2 will also have a separate copy of A that we just saw in the demo. So whenever you are dealing with this kind of question where you have static variables, non-static variables, etc. So you can try to draw a diagram like this 
where static variable will be inside this class space program output 3 and non static variable like a will be here it has a value as a 10 so a is not inside class space because a is a non static in this case so with the help of such diagram we can understand we can figure out the logic behind it and we can answer the question easily that's all for this video guys i hope you understood the concept that i have explained in this video let me know in case of any questions or any doubts and i will come up with another topic where i will discuss few more concepts meanwhile guys if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends thank you for running this one thank you